I didn't really realize if I was alive or dead at that point. Uh, I knew we were in trouble. A terrifying moment after a camping enthusiast from our area is struck by lightning. A severe storm can take place at any time of the year, and severe storms can pack a major punch with high winds, hail, heavy rain, or lightning. In any given year, you can have about one in a million chance of being struck by lightning, and the National Weather Service estimates about 360 people were injured by lightning, with 40 people being killed each year. Josh White was one of those lightning strike victims. The Austinite survived an unbelievable ordeal in California. The first thought was seeing the, the extremely bright light followed by immense pain. Uh, when we got hit, it was excruciating. It's a small fraternity. Those struck by lightning and still around to tell about it. We were extremely lucky. You know, I no doubt in my mind, every day I think I should have been dead. Josh White and his buddies set out on a journey to test their physical strengths and friendship and to become closer to nature. His mother's last words. She told me one thing before we left, and it's bring home my brother alive. And I said, he's going to come home alive, don't worry. White never thought that trip he, his younger brother Colton, and their friend Ian had been planning for a year would test that promise so much. The plan? To hike 15 to 20 miles a day, navigating their way from California's Yosemite National Park to the peak of Mount Whitney in Southern California. It took us about three weeks to get to Mount Whitney. On their way to the summit, the trio settled down above the tree line in an area called an approach zone, where hikers set up to prepare for their final climb. We had hiked about 12 miles that morning, got to a place called Guitar Lake. About two or three o'clock in the afternoon, while we are getting ready for some lunch, some thunderstorm started rolling. I never felt in danger, you know, I was never worried about our safety. Uh, but it, we knew we were in a serious storm. The three men huddled in their tent as torrential downpours of health to shelter. Then the unthinkable happened. It was a bomb went off. A bolt of lightning strikes the tent. After it struck, I ended up being in this part of the tent here, and my brother and friend were in that other part. They just threw us around the tent like a major impact. In the next hour, and that tent was the most terrifying hour of my life because there was no doubt in my mind we we're going to get hit again. They waited out the storm somehow only escaping with minor injuries. And we, we essentially woke up about 4 a.m., cleaned up our camp, strapped on our packs and our headlamps and headed up to the top and were able to make it to the summit during sunrise. And it was one of the most glorious moments of my life to have overcome and, and been at that summit. And it was, it was amazing. After returning home from their incredible journey safely, Josh, Colton, and Ian are passing on a valuable lesson. Just be prepared for, for the worst case, but at the same time, enjoy yourself and, and go after your dreams. Well, Josh works at the REI here in Austin, so he's still involved with camping, and luckily he knew what to do. What a story. So what should you do in a lightning storm? Well, the best thing is to be prepared. If you hear thunder, even in the distance, go indoors. Now remember, sheds, picnic shelters, and tents do not offer protection. If need be, go into a car or truck and close all of your windows. Some other helpful information. Don't use corded phones, don't take a shower, and unplug your electronics. Finally, lightning often strikes higher elevated items first, but not always. And remember, you can be in danger from lightning, even if it's not raining where you are. Yeah, thanks to his experience with camping, Josh did have some helpful advice. If you were ever caught outside in a severe storm, it's called a lightning crouch. A light, lightning crouch is it, where you get low to the ground like this, and you're making yourself into a, a small position and covering your head with your arms so your head doesn't take a direct strike. And so this would be a lightning crouch. If you could get into a position like that, you're going to be better off to survive a direct hit. We were fortunate enough to be in our tent and took an indirect hit, uh, which probably saved our life. Now, many times, weather can be unpredictable. And it can change so fast that KXAN's team of photojournalists might not be able to capture the moment on camera. And that's where our amazing viewers step in with photos sent to report it. 
From moments of beauty to times of terror, whenever the weather outside changes, viewers like you waste no time sending in your photos and images to KXAN's Report It. I love lightning. Sherry McAllister has a knack for capturing lightning strikes. She watches for storms in the distance and waits in the perfect location. That's how she got this shot of lightning hitting the water of Lake Travis near Hippie Hollow. Uh, it's fascinating because when you're watching it with the naked eye, you can't really see what's happening because it's so bright and it's so fast, but when you take a photograph of it, you can actually see what it's doing with the air molecules. But capturing the perfect moment isn't just for the experts. Folks in the right place at the right time can capture some of the best images, showing off strange clouds and hail damage. There's, there's sunsets, there's sunrises, there's fog. The fog is beautiful. You get your, your fall leaves coming. There's, there's something to photograph every bit of the year. Whatever the image reported allows KXAN to have eyes across central Texas, all with the snap of a shutter and click of a mouse. And we here at KXAN always love to see your weather photos, whether severe or beautiful. Just email them in to us, report it at kxan.com. You can also find a link with information on the main page of kxan.com. We didn't have wind here before, now we have wind. <laughs> Life in Bastrop County has changed in many ways after the devastating wildfires there. The fight to rebuild homes and lives. 